Alright everybody, welcome back to yet again another season preview. Today we're moving on to the Detroit Red Wings. You know, the past two previews I've made for this team, actually, like, in every single one, I'm trending in the right direction with this team. Here we are, yet again, another season preview for your Red Wings. And this is the first season where I can actually say maybe they make the playoffs next year. It is definitely a possibility, but before we do that... Let's take a look at last season for your Red Wings. They went 32, 40, and 10 for 74 points. They scored 230 goals and only let in 312, and they missed the playoffs, obviously. They had a lot of blowouts. There was that, like, 12-3 to 3, uh, blowout against the Pittsburgh Penguins. They had multiple against the Coyotes. There was just a number of blowouts within Detroit. It was... It was pretty unbelievable. Uh, the leading scorer was Dylan Larkin with 31 goals, 38 assists for 69 points. And then obviously their leading goaltender was Alex Andalkovic with a 20-24-9 record with a 3.31 goals against average. So, uh, there when you obviously look at this team, although there is negativity of them getting blown out in some games, excuse me, um, there was some positives. There definitely was. Uh, Raymond, Sider were probably the two biggest ones. Uh, Cider obviously won the Calder Trophy this year. Some huge, some huge positives uh, for Detroit. Definitely, they got some of the young guys into the lineup this past season, and they played really well. And I would not, ex I would expect this season to get some even more younger players to come up into this lineup and play. So they had actually a pretty eventful off season, starting out with their departures here: uh, Mark Stahl, Sam Gagne, Thomas Grice, Danny DeKaiser. Carter Rowney and Oli Ulevi. No big players here. No players here who are really just eye-opening that they're gone. Besides maybe Thomas Grice. Because Grice had some sparks of positivity. But it obviously wasn't going to work out in Detroit. He's moved on to the St. Louis Blues now. So, that's your departures list. No players. And again, no players that are really eye-opening and really surprising that they're gone. When you look at their acquisitions, though, there are some eye-openers. Uh, Andrew Kopp. David Perron, Dominic Kubelik, Ben Sherat, Ali Mata, and Ville Husso. So they really locked up some of their um, some of their um, holes in their roster that they had, obviously with their departures and what they had overall. They got some very to solid top six additions in Andrew Kopp and David Perron. Got some depth in Dominic Kubelik. Got a top four defender in Ben Sherat and Ali Mata. And then he obviously got your probably your starting goalie this coming year in Ville Husso. So you have. Some very good acquisitions here uh, all around for the Detroit Red Wings. I like them all all together. Um, some very good, uh, just again, very good additions. I mean, there's really nothing else to say. Uh, starting off here with your top six for their projected lineup, you have Lucas Raymond, Dylan Larkin, Tyler Bertuzzi, Jacob Verana, Andrew Kopp, and David Perron. So I like that top six overall. Very solid uh, players in that roster. Obviously, they're a very good first line of Raymond, Larkin, Bertuzzi. Uh, cop there as well in the second line. Perron may actually uh, get a chance to play in that top roster, especially if the Red Wings do trade Tyler Bertuzzi. There has been looming rumors of that. There's been rumors of that for forever, though. So it's not it's not new. There has been looming rumors of that for a long time. So I would imagine maybe Bertuzzi gets traded this season, uh, maybe during the trade deadline. Potentially, that's just that's just a rumor. Though. That's just me spitballing. Uh, but maybe maybe that happens. Uh, moving on to your bottom six here, you have a few injuries actually. Dominic Kubalik, uh, P.S. Sutter, Philip Zadina, Adam Earn, Michael Rasmussen, and Oscar Sundquist. Then for some of your depth guys, yeah, Robbie Fabry, who's going to be injured for the start of the season. Uh, Joe Valeno and Giovanni Smith. I've been a big fan of Giovanni Smith for a long time. Very good player. Should be good again this coming season for the Red Wings. Uh, but obviously there you have some young guys coming into or in this roster in that bottom six there. You have P.S. Sutter, obviously, Kubalik, Zadina. It's a pretty young team, really. When you when you look at this team, um, they're mostly young or younger players. Uh, there's really no players in this team that I say, yeah, they're 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 pretty old and experienced. Besides, maybe a guy like David Perron and obviously Larkin is as well. There's some there's some older guys in this roster, but a lot of these guys are younger type players. Like obviously Zadina, Valeno, Sunquist, Rasmussen. There you have some young players in this roster, definitely. And it's going to be up to the guys like Perron, Bertuzzi, uh, and Larkin to really teach these guys and get them into the ways of the NHL. Like, it sounded like it's a karate class or whatever. Uh, but uh, very solid uh, forward core overall. I like that. And I, one thing that I realized uh, when I was watching my previous season previews for these teams is that I said for Detroit, and I could only say this for, for one other team, the Rangers, 
I don't have a problem with anything on this roster, and I, I really don't um, a, a year later. Like, I really don't. In fact, I like it even more than I did before. So, obviously, there. Uh, you look at your defense, you have a first pairing of Ali Mata and Moritz Sutter. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, ben Schrott and Philip Ronek. And then you have two injuries on the third pairing. Uh, Jake Wallman, who's going to be out for a little bit to start the season. And then Mark Pissick, who's going to be out until probably around January. Uh, it's really unfortunate there to obviously see Pissick come to his new team and then get hurt. It really stinks. Uh, Jordan Osterley, Stephen Camfer, and Lindstrom. Um, I think it's Nicholas Lindstrom. It's not the... Not the, uh, the one who's insane. Uh, then the, or it might be Gustav Lindstrom. I'm not sure. There's so many Lindstroms in the NHL. It's, it's just so complicated. But uh, Lindstrom's obviously one of your fill-in guys there as well. So you do have some players uh, to work with on that blue line. I have Mata with Cider because uh, Cider's supposed to carry Ali Mata. Maybe they put Ben Chiron on that first pairing. Maybe, maybe they just prove me wrong. I don't know. But the really, and, and if there's only thing that I could point out here, Maybe the problem is the defense. You don't see any really huge name players in this blue line. You have Cider and Sherratt, and that's really about it. You don't see any really huge players on this on this defense. So obviously there that is something they may need to look at. But I don't think it's a problem right now. I really don't think it's a problem. Uh, Detroit could the Iserman Iserman could have some tricks up his sleeve. Come the trade deadline, goes out maybe trades for Chikrin. I Honestly, Detroit could be the dark horse. I mean, I'm gonna say it right now. Detroit could very well be the dark horse. Uh, for Jacob Chicker in there. And then obviously there you have your goaltending team of Ville, Huso, and Alex Andalkovich. Then you have a third string of arguably either Sebastian Kosa and UC Okinora. It's such a confusing name to say. Um, UC Okinora. Quite a, quite a name. New addition, by the way. He's not. I didn't put him in the key um, acquisitions, but he was he was one of them. Uh, so overall, I like that tandem. It's pretty young. Uh, Huso, obviously, they're going to get a chance with the Red Wings to become a starting goaltender, and obviously Nadalkovich as well. Playing his second full season in the NHL, he'll probably be better off as a backup, if we're being honest. Uh, so now for some, time for some of your biggest questions. How will the top six do? Uh, I, I mean, the top six is full of a lot of uh, younger players, but we got some old guys in this roster as well. I think it'll do well. Uh, Kopp and Perron, obviously going to bring... Uh, some of that chemistry there too. Uh, Raymond, a very solid forward as well. So they should be very, they should be pretty good uh, in the top six there. And then obviously the other question is, how will the young guys pan out? You got some younger guys coming into this lineup or have been in this lineup for a while. And some of the guys that I'm mainly pointing out is Joe Valeno and Philip Zadina, mainly because they haven't been what people thought they were going to be. No disrespect to them, they didn't really get, some of them didn't get the NHL chances that they deserved, but they are two players who really, kind of this might be their last season to really try and pan it out because Valeno has had almost five years now to try and get himself to be a good player so we'll see what Valeno does and Zadina obviously and some of these other younger guys as well uh, moving on to your point projections according to the hockey news's fantasy guide here it's not gonna it's gonna be blurry uh, but okay uh, the light reflection is terrible uh, but starting off here in your points of meter uh, you have Dylan Larkin leading the way with 75. Then you have Lucas Raymond in second with 68. Then you have Moritz Sider with 62. Uh, Tyler Bertuzzi with 58. And David Perron with 56. Makes sense with Larkin leading the way. Although I think Raymond could challenge him, I think Larkin probably does lead the way with his team. Uh, once again, they're obviously in Sider. Should be better than last season. Maybe even could be argued a top 10 defenseman at the end of next year. Because he, he played unbelievable last season. Uh, so I definitely think that is a possibility. Uh, your sleeper or your boss is actually Jacob Verana, and this makes sense. Um, at, at 26, Verana is in the elder states, a man among the team's bevy, bevy of young talent. A full season and a clean bill of health will see him establish career highs in 37 games with the winnings over two seasons. He scored at a 47-goal pace. So we'll see what Verana does. Obviously, he got injured last year, and then the year before, he was traded over to the Red Wings from the Capitals. So we'll see um, what Jacob Verona can do um, with with a full season with the Detroit Red Wings. I hope he does well. I've been a fan of Verona for a long time. I hope he does uh, very good at the NHL level or um, in his first. Well, he's done good at the NHL level. in his first season with the Red Wings or first full season. I'm 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 just gonna stop playing. Uh, anyways, moving on to your biggest question here. Now, do they make the playoffs? Now, personally, anything could happen in that Atlantic Division. And the past two years, I've said no past two years I've said no honestly I'm still leaning towards no but I'm honestly gonna say maybe for right now I'm, I'm gonna say maybe mainly because it, it all depends on the teams above them and what happens to them 
Does Florida fall off? Does Tampa fall off? Does Ottawa become the team that they're hyped up to be? Does Boston fall off? There's some questions. Uh, definitely in that Atlantic division. Detroit's one of those teams that could very well move up in the standings if another team moves down. Now, as, as, and I know that sounds so basic because that could happen in any division, but Detroit's one of those teams that if a team like Boston falls off, which they could very well because they're without Marshawn and some of their other key players, Detroit could be the one that goes in and takes their place. Um, but overall, this team is definitely better. I don't know if they're playoff better, but they're definitely in a better spot, and I think that they can definitely make a push and maybe, just maybe, make the playoffs. So anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you all very much for watching. For I support us later, I really do appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe down below if you are new. And anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.